All right, let's look at 3, 4. So 3, 4, we're just going to um, do more means and standard deviations, um, but with group data. So group data is like this table where we had that range of numbers. So rather than a single number, we grouped all of the data from 134 to 137 together. Um, otherwise, maybe our list is just way too long, right? In this example, we have 94 SUVs, so we didn't want to have a list of 94 data values, so we grouped them. So we're looking at um, the 60 mile per hour braking distance in feet for 94 SUVs, a random sample. Um, so when they brake at 60 miles per hour, right, how far until they stop? That's what this is measuring. So we can't really enter 134 through 137 on the calculator, um, right? The calculator would be like, which one do you want me to use? So I think what I'm gonna do for the X's is use the midpoints. for my x values. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do 134 plus 137, right? We do the endpoints and then divide by two, 135.5, right? Next one would be 137 plus 140, divide by two, 138.5. We did this back in chapter two. All right, I'm going to go through it a little quick. Go for it on your own. Just add the two endpoints, divide by two. You can watch me or you can go for it. I'm not going to talk through it. I talked through the first ones. So just add the endpoints, divide by two. Oops, that was a typo. And the midpoint should be in the middle of the number. So if it's not in the middle, you're making typos. So if you need a little more time, pause the video. Um, otherwise, check out that our numbers match. Um, so rather than using the raw data, what we're going to do is we're going to assume we have 135 and it shows up once. 135.5. We're going to assume we have 138.5 and it shows up seven times. Right? So on. So it repeats, right? Seven of them. And then 141.5 shows up 16 times. So rather than writing this out, we're going to let the calculator figure that out for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our favorite menu, stat, edit, so that we can find the mean and standard deviation in a second. Um, the formulas are essentially the same. We just multiply by frequency. That's the new part. But the calculator will do that for us. And I'll show you how to make the calculator do that. So go back to stat, edit. Um, and we'll do two lists this time. So we're going to put the data into L1, the midpoints into L1, and L2 will be the frequencies. So anytime you have frequencies, you have two lists. So you're going to go to our new favorite menu, Stat, Edit, and we're going to enter the data into L1 and L2. So number, enter, number, enter, number, enter. Remember, if you want to get rid of a list, go to the top and hit Clear, Enter. That'll erase it. I'm not going to do that because I already have the data in here. Um, so you should have two lists, L1 and L2. If you ever lose L1 or L2, I did make a video about it, but you can go to stat and you can go down to setup editor and hit enter and it'll make it come back. So that'll make it come back if it's missing. I have a video just on that so you can check that out. All right, so once you enter the data, we can find the mean and standard deviation. So L1 is the data, L2 is the frequencies. I'll fill in the note in a second, note two. You might be wondering what goes there. I'm just waiting till we do this. Um, you're gonna go back to stat. Cal can do one bar stat, but you have to be careful. It always wants to, when my computer's open, it wants to open that. All right, calculator. So back to stat, we're gonna go to calc, one var stat. And before we've been typing L1, now we need to tell it to also look at L2. So you're gonna do comma L2. If you have the calculator that asks for like the data and frequency, so you just add L2 into the row that says frequency. 
If you have that, you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, yours looks like mine. You'll notice if I don't type that, oops, stat calc, if I just do L1, you'll see I'm getting different numbers. And that's because the calculator isn't looking at the frequencies if I don't tell it to. So without telling it to look at that, it is wrong. So we need to make sure it looks at L1 comma L2. So we're telling the calculator, hey, my data is in L1, but my frequencies are in L2. Parentheses, this is my data, comma, L2. So we didn't have to do this before because we never had frequencies. It assumes the frequency is one if we don't have that. And this is all considered an approximation because we don't know the actual data values. Remember, we used the midpoints. So it's probably likely that this isn't exactly 135.5, right? These aren't all 138.5, but that's the midpoint of that range. So these are approximate numbers. Um, this was a sample. Remember, it was only 94 SUVs, not all SUVs. So X bar would be 145.71. And S is right here, 4.2952. If this were a population, I would use 4.2723. All right, so let's do that. What percentage of the data lies within um, two standard deviations? So I'm just going to copy the table so we don't have to look up. So we're going to calculate like the range of possibilities, and then we'll calculate the percent. So we'll do the range of possibilities. Two standard deviations means we're going to take the mean and we're going to add and subtract two times the standard deviation, not one. This drove me crazy. Okay. Sorry about that. So we're going to do 2 times the standard deviation, 1.45.71 plus or minus 8.5904, right? We were doubling the standard deviation. I will, in the next section, we'll figure out why we're doing this. Right now we're just kind of practicing the math. So we'll subtract. I always do subtraction first. It just makes more sense. And then we'll add. So these are my range of possibilities. And then we'll find the percent. All right, and so let's see. 137 to 154. So basically the middle rows, not the first or the last one, would fit the range. And you might want to say 6 out of 8, but that's incorrect, right? Because these aren't individual data values. These are representing multiple data values. So it's really all the frequencies out of 94. So 94 is all the data. And I think if you add these numbers up, you get 91. So 91, and you can check that while I write this out. 91 are between 137.1196 and 154.71. 154. In my head, I actually did 94 minus 3. Just took away the 1 and the 2 a little faster. So it is not 6 out of 8, right? These are not individual data values. These data values are showing up multiple times. If I were to list this out, I would have 94 data values with a lot of repeats. So we're going to do 91 divided by 94. We get 0.968, which is about 96.81%. So I like four decimal places when it's a decimal, and then that gives me two decimal places when it's a percent. 
And I think last time we got 100%, so this is close to 100%, which will be significant. Um, we'll kind of always be in the same range, which we'll talk about in 3.5. But 96% of our data is within two standard deviations. So right now it might sound a little abstract, like what is two standard deviations? But this will be a really important cutoff point later. All right, so 3.4 three, three, is pretty short, but I'll finish it up in one more video.